Hello, I am Joe Jones, and I'm Senior Vice President here at USDTL. Thank you for taking time out of your day to visit us here at our laboratory. We receive a lot of questions on how do we process fingernails for drugs of abuse testing. Today, the purpose of this video is to walk you through this process in a stepwise fashion so that you can gain an appreciation of how the testing operates. But first, we must receive the specimen into the laboratory. Specimens arrive at our facility Monday through Saturday via common commercial couriers such as FedEx, UPS, and U.S. Mail. The specimen packages are inspected for signs of obvious tampering. The individual specimen package is removed from the courier overwrap, opened, and the specimen and paperwork are removed. Again, the specimen itself is inspected for signs of obvious tampering. The shipping label and chain of custody number are scanned into our system. This allows us to know if and when a package has arrived and which samples were in the shipping package. To accession the specimen into our computer system, the technician scans the barcode at the top of the chain of custody form and the matching peel and stick barcode that the collector affixed to the specimen. If these two scans do not match, the computer system does not allow the technician to continue. The specimen is rejected at this point. During this step, the technician assigns the client-specific test code and the computer system assigns a laboratory ID number. This starts the internal chain of custody that is followed throughout the entire testing process for the specimen in the laboratory. The paperwork is forwarded to a separate order entry area where specific specimen information such as collector name, collection date, and donor ID are entered and verified. Meanwhile, the specimen is forwarded to the aliquoting station. An aliquot is a portion of a larger hole, especially one taken for analysis. The specimen is inspected for obvious signs of tampering, specifically any damage to the tamper evidence seal that was placed on the specimen by the collector. The tamper evidence seal is broken and the specimen itself is retrieved from the package and inspected for unusual appearance. A 20 milligram aliquot of the specimen is prepared using an analytical balance. The aliquot is transferred to a small tube. The specimen is washed with acetone, dried, and five to six stainless steel ball bearings are added. The tube is placed in a ball mill, which consists of a piston that moves in and out very rapidly. The action of the ball bearings on the nail reduces the nail to a fine powder. Methanol is added and the tube is placed in a warm, sonicating water bath for two hours. Sonication is applying sound energy to agitate particles in a sample. The warm, sonicating water bath helps the methanol penetrate into the small powder particles to extract the drug. Methanol is transferred to a tube and evaporated under a stream of nitrogen while incubating in a warm water bath. This leaves a dried residue in the bottom of the tube. The tubes with their dried residues are transferred to the initial testing section of the laboratory. The initial test is immunoassay, specifically ELISA. ELISA is a common laboratory technique which is used to measure the concentration of an analyte using antibodies or antigens in a solution. ELISA utilizes the binding properties of drug-specific antibodies. Drug present in a sample bind to the drug-specific antibodies. The extent of the binding can be traced by color change which is proportional to the concentration of the drug in the sample. The residues are dissolved in buffer and are loaded onto the robotic pipetting station. The robot transfers very precise amounts of sample and chemicals for analysis to the ELISA plates. Once the final solution for the process is added, the color change is observed. A dark yellow well is negative and the intensity of the color decreases with increasing concentration of drug.
the plates are placed in a plate reader where the absorbance of a particular wavelength of light is measured for each well. The results are uploaded to the computer system, reviewed, and verified by two different laboratory technicians. The specimens that are negative for all drug classes are reported at this time by a negative certifying scientist. When a specimen does not test negative for a particular drug class, the ID numbers are sent back to the receiving area to initiate confirmation testing. The initial specimen is retrieved, its identity is re-verified, and a new aliquot is prepared from the original specimen. The initial sample prep process is repeated on the new specimen aliquot, including weighing, washing, drying, powdering, and extracting with an extraction solvent. However, for the confirmation test, the extract must be first purified and concentrated using a solid phase extraction technique for LCMSMS analysis. Once extracted, sealed vials are transferred to the confirmation section for analysis. The vials are loaded onto the liquid chromatography tandem mass spectrometry or LCMSMS instrument. LCMSMS is the gold standard confirmation technique for confirming the presence of most drugs of abuse in biological fluids and tissues. Details on how that works is beyond the scope of this presentation, but it is important to know that it is the gold standard for most hair confirmations because of its high degree of specificity. LCMSMS uses mass spectrometry to identify specific compounds, and a mass spectrum for a compound is as unique to a compound as a fingerprint is to a human being. Following confirmation testing and two levels of data review, a positive certifying scientist reviews all of the data, both screening and confirmation, and all of the chain of custody, both internal and external. If all of the chain of custody is intact and documented appropriately, and all of the data satisfy all of our quality criteria, a final report is issued to the client. As a last line of defense for the donor, the original specimen is maintained under chain of custody for one year for the purpose of referee or retesting. USDTL maintains a dedicated client advocate group to assist you with any aspect of your drug testing program and can provide the proper resources to you to answer any of your questions.